see, I, I told you about the problems over here. We got the cylinder head on and torqued, got rags on to keep it protected. Um, but we know that cylinder eight on this side uh, was also misfiring. So I've got it stripped down and we're gonna pull the valve cover slash intake off of here and see what is going on in cylinder eight and pray that the uh, lifter hasn't spun in the bore like it did on this side because like I've said before he's just you know he's already I think at a loss basically on this and pulling this head off is just not in the budget so um, anyhow yeah I got the crankcase ventilation filter off uh, fuel rail uh, down here all the fuel lines um, I didn't get a chance to film it uh, all the harness is out of the way it's really not hard to do this guys and these are a one-time use so they say I have reused them before I give the customer the option uh, but this is what's interesting so this is number eight injector line okay and then, let me see if I can get back there to where you can see. Well, for instance, you know, here's, uh, here's the first injector, which would be five. And come back here to number eight. I don't know how well it's picking up, but number eight's new. Okay, so somebody, and I think I went over this in the other video, number one and eight were the biggest issues here. And once I got this truck, and got to looking, I thought we maybe had an injector issue. Well, so did somebody else. Because 1 and 8 have new lines and new injectors, and they are Ford parts. So I think a dealership had to run at this truck, threw some injectors and lines in it, charged the customer, and told them it didn't fix your truck, you need a new motor. So, anyway. Uh, but yeah, anyway, these are your injector lines. Um, like I said, I give the customer the option to reuse these or to replace. Ford says replace. Many mechanics say that. I don't see, I just don't see, I mean, there's not a lip focus. There's not a lip on there. This, this is supposed to be there. That lip right there is supposed to be there. You can see where it crushes down. Come on. Well, now I can't get it to focus. Anyway. So, yeah. I give customers the option to reuse them. Uh, we're not on this one because we had to get the kit. I'll show that later. But it comes with all new injector lines. And it is it is a good idea to replace them because these get uh, a lot of crud built up. This damn thing there you can see how much just junk is in the end of it so it's a good idea to go ahead and replace them but you know some people that's it's up to them it's looking for the there it is Ford Moco or FOMOCO and there's a part number that was a big explosion uh so let me get this stuff out of the way here these lines will not be reused and i'm going to uh i need to get the injectors pulled out i'll go ahead and show you the injector puller i have for these uh, you can get these out without the puller but the puller does make it a lot easier and it's not very expensive so let me get that okay so i got the injectors capped off here just got some plastic caps over them you can order uh, caps like that off Amazon uh, or like me I've got just bags of them sitting around from parts I just keep them come in handy because you want to keep that junk out of there I had this rag staff stuffed in here but take that out for a minute so I can show you the pooler um, now one thing it just pissed me off before I get into that rant. This thing, this mat, it's like a, a rubber flexible mat. Uh, my mom got this for me for 
well, I think it was a present. I don't know, but she got it for me. But uh, I guess this guy was on Shark Tank. I've never watched that show. But uh, you can go and buy this mat. He's a, a veteran. So, you know, go check this out. Go Google it. Check it out. I like it. Little compartments, and it's got like a sticky rubber bottom. So it'll, it kind of, you know, even with the weight hanging on it, it sticks there. Pretty cool. And you always want to support a veteran. Uh, big supporters here on this channel of veterans, first responders, police. Uh, if you don't like police, you don't like veterans, you don't like army, military, first responders, go ahead and watch something else. I don't want you on my channel. Don't care if I lose you, if you can't support those men and women. Anyhow, now I'm going to get pissed off about something else. The injector hold down bolts. Here's the one that came out of cylinder 8, back there in the back. Um, they're T50 Torx, that's what you need to get them out. You got to be careful taking these out. Take them out with a slow pull with your ratchet because this is the sh blank that happens to them and I hate I mean just look at the let's see if we can get it to focus look at the metal it's cheap aluminum these are torqued to yield too so they actually stretch I think they're aluminum and they got some steel in there they're made of something some kind of crap but anyway they're made to stretch so you torque them and then you put a degree torque on them so these things stretch like a spring but the problem is when you go to take them out they get a little corrosion around there but that wasn't the problem it's the metal it's garbage so now I got a freaking what one was it five six seven ejector seven once I get this cover off you'll be able to get the it'll probably be about that much sticking up I'll have to try to get it out of there. I'll show you guys a trick if it doesn't just back out, which it probably won't. But, God, that pisses me off. Every freaking time. Anyway, so I got that out. Um, here's the tool. It's three pieces. Okay. There they are. Uh, this one in particular is off Amazon. Seems to work just fine. It goes under the injector just like the hold down sits and then I try to spray try to spray brake clean around all these and blow them off with air it's a good idea then this one goes down where the injector hold down bolt would go and I'll get it started here maybe if I can find the now on seven where it broke off i won't be able to use this tool it's marvelous also uh, it'll have to be pried out just have to be careful um there it is and these are a what is that it's, uh nine nine millimeter allen yeah so you get that one started down into the threads I don't run it down all the way. It's just got to make a little pull here. Okay. That's probably good. Then you put this guy in. It's good. Then I just take, turn it down by hand till I can't turn it anymore. Hold on, I gotta get this. It is hot. It's humid. There's storms all around me. Alright. Got the torx bit off there. Alright. Now. Again, same same thing like I said for the uh For the injector hold down bolts just nice even pressure and see i'm barely barely pulling barely putting any pressure and i think we're there already 
Nope, just kidding. Not there yet. But this is a super easy way. It's worth waiting on the tool if you can. Because if you break off the top of that injector or slip and take off that return nozzle, which comes off pretty easy, that sucks. That's an expensive part to replace. You gotta replace that whole injector. Of course, this one's gonna be a little more stubborn because I'm filming. And I got sweat rolling in my eyes. Be a field mechanic, they said. It's great, they said. Be a mechanic. Be a diesel mechanic. Get extra greasy. It's coming. You can see, there's, maybe. Yeah, see, it's coming out of there. This one was probably a good one to use the puller on because it, it's been a little stubborn. <clears throat> it's been a lot stubborn, honestly. There it is, it's free now. So once it gets free, Got a spam call right in the middle of filming that. It's a good part about using your phone to do this. Someday I'll get a camera. Alright, so the injector's loose now. So let me... I'm just going to show you one injector, then I'll go down through here, repeat the process. Try to cut out some of the time. I know you guys don't like long videos. I don't like long videos. Oh. Well, come on out of there. Come on. There we go. There's that. Pull the tool out of there. And now, the injector. And there it is. Make sure what's well, that's weird. I don't know if it'll focus. I don't know if that caught it on its way out. Oh come on. What is that? Something on the end of that injector tip. I think it's just some carbon it caught on its way out. Anyway. There's the injector, need to clean it up. Make sure you mark which spot this came out of because all of these are coded. When you put these in, you have to code that injector with that serial number you can barely see. You have to code this injector to which hole it's in so the computer knows the flow rates, timing, etc. So make sure you label them. If you don't remember, if I haven't, I know I've said it before, but still, on a 6-7, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This obviously being the driver's side. All right, let me get the injectors out, and then all that's left, I'm not going to film it. We just got a bunch of uh, bolts all around this intake. You just got to go around and find them. They're all 8 millimeters. You know, put this back in here for now. So just go around, find all of it, and then I'll pull this thing off. I'll film it when I pull it off, and we'll see what number eight back there looks like. Okay, one tip real quick. Um, when you're taking the glow plugs out, which are uh, right, this is the injector hole. Glow plugs, the lower hole, down there, right there. And there, and there, and then there's one back, you get the idea. Um, this is a snap-on socket, okay? See that little ledge in there? Even though it's a deep well, these uh, glow plugs are 8 millimeter heads. That little ledge won't let you get in there. So if you're trying to get these things out, uh, especially if you're just doing glow plugs, and you're in there in a tight spot trying to get them out and can't get the socket on, this is a Craftsman, no ledge, and slides right on. So, 
I love my snap-ons, but, you know, sometimes it's little things. I guess that little extra mill in there, milling, extra material, whatever I'm trying to say, supports the sidewall of the socket, but won't work pulling a glow plug out of one of these. Okay, so the intake slash valve cover's off, and much to my surprise, and what I was kind of hoping, oh, hold on, let me get up here, number eight back here, all the push rods are in place. Um, pull them out to make sure, you know, there's not something I'm missing. Maybe there's one bent. I would suspect that one, which is the long arm. Um, I gotta figure out why we had a misfire on this one. See, they shouldn't do that. See how tight, and I'll show you here in a minute what I'm talking about. This is an oiling bar. Um, runs right here picks up the oil runs across and actually sprays oil down on here excellent design my opinion I mean this is a, a huge uh, valve train upgrade from the 6.0s and the 6.4s that's why I don't get this truck and let me see if I can this one's probably easier to see maybe uh, see See where these are riding on the valve stems? They're not riding centered. They're all riding... I think I moved that one. Now this one's okay. The shorter... It's the longer ones. See? Shorter one's riding dead center. Longer one... Look how far off to the side that is. See? See? Now this is number eight, and what's really weird, the long one's dead center. What's this one? That one's that one's off to the side. The shorter ones are not, which I mean I understand why. There's not as much, you know, there's not as much pressure on the short ones as they rock. These long suckers have got to go all the way from there to here. They've got a lot of pressure on them to push that valve, and if you get movement in there, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna mess up. I can see more through this. I came with my eyes. Somebody, somebody honking. Love working out here in the front where everybody can see me. I can see. Let's see. This would be. So this is the long arm. Is it worn in there? You can see it's not sitting correctly. Yep, see the wear? Oh no, that's right. I'm sorry. Because you can still see the tiny little get my thing here. See the tiny little even with the flathead. This itty bitty little lip right here. That's even right through there. So it's not worn there. Anyway, now I'm just diagnosing and mumbling. But I need to get uh, the oil rail off, the rocker assemblies off. Uh, they're all garbage. I mean, I'll look at them. But the used set I got, I've already looked at them. They have no side to side movement like these. Most likely, I'm going to pitch all those. Um, I'll check all the push rods. Um, I might, well, I don't know. I'll check them to see if they're straight. And, I'm, I, and then i got to figure out what's going on back here. I mean, I took a, I looked down in there with my phone and took a picture down in there. And I don't see a spun lifter like we had up here. If the lifter's not spun, I don't. I don't know why it would be misfiring. If the wheel was chewed off and it was sitting straight, you'd have excessive play in those push rods right now. Um, but it doesn't. So, I'm sure I'm missing something here. But I don't know, it's it's 7.30. Uh, I got some research to do on a gasoline Chevy 6.0. It worked. It's misfiring on the rear 
or no, the even bank of cylinders, and I have no fuel trims coming up on the scanner. Damn gasoline engine. So I need to try to figure that out tonight. I might, I might try to rip this off tonight. Get an answer. I might not. We'll see. Okay, so I got the rocker assemblies pulled off the driver's side here. Um, and actually, I didn't find anything obvious. So, I don't know. And again, the misfire was on 8. Um, I bore scoped and looked down at all the lifters down through there. And they're all in the retainer or guide, whatever you want to call it. There you go. All the way down through there, they look good. None of the push, push rods were bent. Um, so I don't know. I bore scoped the injector hole there on eight. And something looked a little funny on the piston, but it's hard to tell because right now it's at top dead center. And I was going to rotate the motor and try to get a better look, but it doesn't matter. He's not going to pull this head off this side. He's reached his max amount. You know, if it's got to go back to the auction with a misfire or whatever, um, that's just the way it's going to be. So I'd like to know. I'd like to figure this out. But at this point, all we can do is put it back together and hopefully see... Uh, see if the misfire goes away so this side's ready for the rocker assemblies I'm using all the rock used rocker assemblies I bought and I'll show you a minute um, them compared to these uh, they just look in person when you're standing here looking at them they look to be in a little better shape probably use all the push rods that I bought used I know you're supposed to you know push rods wear and you sh should keep track but when you buy them used and they come in a rolled up thing that there's nothing you can do I mean this motors not not gonna be perfect I hate this thing but anyway let me uh, let me walk back here and show you the rocker assemblies I pulled off this side okay so it's bright out here but these are the ones that came off the truck these are the used ones that came with this set I bought used again customers choice not mine um, this was number eight this is where our misfire was. I don't see anything. If you looked at the other videos you saw on the uh, passenger side, I found where this was kind of uh, worn out, where this was moving side to side. But you can see the factory ridge right there. And same on the other side. All these are fine. You flip it over, um, I mean, they're fine. All, all of them were fine. They seem to have a little more slop to them. Um, I don't really know. Maybe that's just me. But none of them are wore side to side. I don't know why they're riding on the valve stems that far sideways. Um, like, see that one? It's actually got what you can feel in your fingernail. It's not smooth. See how that one's really worn on the side? So, anyway, here's the used ones. And to me, in person, they just look better. You can see how they were riding on the valve stem even. Um, looking down in here, they just seem to be worn a little better. I don't know how many miles were on this one. But... Um, everything about these you know I'm basically basically trying to put used parts on an engine that really the engine needs all new valve train new cam new valve train all throughout I don't you know anybody's built engines knows you, you shouldn't put uh, lifters or I'm sorry push rods in except for the holes they came out of because they wear different that's the theory. Don't know if it's true or not, but, you know, this is the way they came shipped to me. They seem to be in good shape. They're not worn strange. You know, there's lifters. Um, there's the ones for the other side. Retainers. 
yeah so there's all the rest of the push rods that's how they came so yeah all I can do is the best I can do on this thing but I've never had a 6.7 with this kind of valve train 